We got a 2010 Sportsman 500 HO and we are doing a little bit of front end work. Now we did replace tie rod ends uh, inner and outer a while ago and they put some more miles on this thing and now the front end has some more play. Found out that the control arm bushings are shot, lots of play in there. Uh, the other side was really bad, but this side's got a little bit so we're gonna replace these as well. And then the dreaded lower ball joint. That thing needs to replace, has a lot of play, and then the uh, since we're in here, we're changing the brake pads out. Now, these uh, ball joints, you can buy, you know, knockoff ones on eBay, Amazon, and they actually come with a tool to help remove them because normally, like on cars and stuff, you can get on the top and use uh, the ball joint tool and press it out. Well, these don't have that. I'll show you how to, how, uh, to remove these with this new tool. Um, but yeah, let's jump into this thing. Oh, also, uh, a lot of people just take this whole strut out with the spring and everything. Doing that, you gotta remove this crap. Way too much work. So actually, what you can do is remove these two bolts and slowly, this whole knuckle, besides the spring, will come out. So let's do it that way, it'll save a lot of time. All right, so here's some of the tools we use to get this project done. We've got a C-clamp. That is just to push the uh, caliber piston back in so we can replace those pads. Here is the ball joint tool that came with the kit. You do not need an impact, but it does make life a lot easier when you're using the tool and when you're taking the axle nut off. Speaking of which, this is a, was a 15 16 socket. Works perfect on that and the axle nut. We have pliers, that's just to take the cotter pins apart. Two Allens, this is a four and a uh, five mil. That is for, uh, well, oh, that's for the brake caliber. This is for the ball joint. Now we have 14 mils and 13 mils. That's to take the knuckle apart and the brake caliber apart and sockets to, to go with that. 15 mil to get the, uh, the wheel off, 17. Now this will change because that 17 millimeter was for the ball joint that we got. Uh, the OEM one, I think was a 14 or a 15. I could, I, I'm not really sure on that, but it was a different size compared to the aftermarket one. 3 8 drive extension just to get into things a little easier. 3 8 drive ratchet. So. That's basically it. Torque wrench, obviously. Um, I don't know. I put it back, so I don't have it out here. Uh, and some parts cleaner to help keep everything nice and clean. So that's about it. All this dirt, make sure you clean up before you do all this. Uh, if you can give it a bath, make sure you do that. A um, little cold outside for that. But a little update on what we got. So we got the caliper off, that's to the side. Now this line gets held on by a little clip uh, and bolt right here. These are half inch, 13 mil, but these are also, there's two of them. We're gonna loosen these up to let this knuckle fall down. Now we're gonna do that after we get the ball joint unhooked. We'll smack that with a big hammer, let that drop. Uh, and then really what you could do too is if uh, once you have that ball joint out, you can actually unhook the control arm too. I think we're just gonna wait on that for now. Get this knuckle out of the way and then we can work on the, uh, the lower ball joint. That is the hardest part of this whole job is that ball joint. So uh, yeah, let's jump back into this. ball joint is loose and ready to come out. We're gonna have that, leave that nut on there just so it holds it. And this is again, half inch, 13 mil. We're gonna loosen these up and you'll see it should drop a little bit.
All right, so this tool is actually pretty darn nifty. So you want to screw this thing all the way in, or most of the way in, just so you can get lots of threads here. This is also why you do not want to mess up the threads on these ball joints. Okay, so you got a good bite on here, and then you want to get your socket to fit on the big nut, and then you just loosen it out. Okay, we got a little pipe wrench. You just need something to hold this. You might be able to get it just by hand, but then you loosen this up until it gets tight. Look, it's on there good and tight. Get your impact on here, or you can do it by, you know, by hand. And you're gonna loosen it and pull it out. she is. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. <laughs> that one got away from me a little bit, but that's it. Pulls right up out of there. And then you just loosen this off. All done. Let's put the new one in. Take this boot off. Yeah, get it started. Ooh, there we go. So we got new ball joint in. Don't forget the ring. No, actually. Now, when doing this part, your He-Man, you can kind of push this up in there, but it's difficult. So work smarter, not harder. What we're gonna do is go underneath and uh, use this jack, and jack it up to where it needs to be, and then we tighten it all down. This thing's all tightened up. We're just gonna put the tie rod in, back on. Okay, so now we're gonna rip this bottom control arm off and replace those bushings. Okay, so you have two 14 mils on each side here. Well, this is what you're left with. Just got the control arm on each side. You have these bushings. And inside is going to be a shaft and grease out the wazoo. There's one. There's the shaft that you can see the threads into. Move this thing up a little bit. These are the new bushings. Just put it in the other side. Just like so. And then uh, make sure your zerk fitting is still in good shape. You can put this back on and then you just fill this thing up full of grease, tighten it down. Uh, yeah, should be good. Okay, so we got this all cleaned up. Put this control arm back in.
Okay, so you don't want to tighten these completely down yet until you actually have weight on the machine and the suspension loaded up. So we're going to put the uh, ball joint on. So again, what you can do is you can put your jack underneath this, press up on it, just to get the weight off the jack stands, and then that means you, you, know, you have a lot of weight on this, then you can torque these down. Am I using an ATV jack? Yes. Yes, I am. Why? Because I don't feel like finding the other one, so this will work. You just want to preload the suspension right there. That's where we're at. So now you can torque these down. And fill it with grease, whatever grease you want. And obviously, don't forget to tighten your ball joint. You want it good and tight, and then line it up so you get the car pin through it. All right, what we're gonna do is, uh, you can torque this better once the quad and everything's on the ground. So we'll do that just to line it up so you can get that car pin in and get the torque spec.